Hey guys, welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be talking about welding, what it is, and do a review of this Forney Easy Weld. Thanks for joining us and welcome to our channel. Here we're going to show you not only how we turned our house into our small family farm, but we're going to show you how and why things work around the house. So I started to weld a while back, as you know from a video I did about a year ago. And I started with this 40 Easy Weld 125C and it has worked really good for my needs. I just do occasional stuff, fabricating little bits here and there. So when I got started, I was really interested like, hey, what is this welding and how does it actually work? So let's talk about what welding actually is, how it works, and then we'll do a review of this porny. So welding, simply put, is the process of putting two metals together. In order to bring those two metals together, we will need to raise the temperature of those metals so they melt together. The easiest way to do this is electricity. Now enter the welder. In general, a welder is going to have a piece of metal that's meltable in a stick form or a gun form with a wire coming out of it, one of the two typically. The welder will ground his system to the metal being welded, and then the meltable metal comes out of either the gun or it's in stick form. And when it comes in contact with the metal that's being welded, it creates an arc when it completes that circuit. The arc is where a bunch of electricity goes right through that small area of those pieces of metal and actually melts the two pieces of metal together along with that meltable metal in that gun or stick form. Then after this process happens, that molten metal actually solidifies, hardens, and starts to cool and forms a solid bond of metal where there's no longer two pieces of metal but it's one piece that's melted together and that's what a weld is. In that process you do sometimes get what's called slag which is on top of that weld. This slag comes from remnants of uh, the process of, of welding, especially if you're using flux core welding. There is another important piece to talk about here and that's shielding gases. Shielding gases are needed where the welding is actually taking place. Now, I'm not talking about like the room, but I'm just talking about the small area where you're actually touching metal to metal. These gases can range from CO2 to argon to oxygen. And what they actually do is help the metal to melt by creating a little safe space for it to create that arc and uh, become molten and join those pieces of metal together. And what we call that in welding is, is pooling, where you get that pool of metal together and that gas helps protect it. If you don't have that gas, you can get porous welds where there's holes in it, and you can also get a lot more spatter than you normally would. So the shielding gases are super important. So we'll talk about three kinds of welders briefly here. So let's talk about the first kind of welder. It's gonna be a stick welder. You're gonna ground the piece of metal you're welding, and then in your gun, quote unquote, is an electrode that holds onto a stick. And that's where you're gonna make contact and make the arc on the end of the stick. There are no shielding gases in stick welding, so you do get a little bit more spatter, but you do have more options in terms of weldable metals that you're gonna do. The second kind of welding is actually MIG welding, and that's where you use a solid coarse or solid metal strand to go through a welding gun, and it also can include those shielding gases we talked about to create that safe space to uh, pool the molten metal. The third kind of welder is a flux core welding. So instead of a solid core metal that's running through that gun, it's actually gonna be a tube of metal, and on the inside it's a flux resin. That flux resin does a couple of things, but mainly what it's gonna do is, when it melts and creates that arc, it's gonna vaporize that flux and create shielding gases in that area. It tends to be more portable, so you can do a lot of welding around without having to lug around gas tanks and stuff like that. The one disadvantage though is it can create a little bit more spatter, so you do have to clean it up really well. So no matter what kind of welder you're gonna use, uh, you do have to clean up, so after you're done welding, make sure everything is cooled and use an angle grinder to grind everything down and especially get all that slag off, so you get a nice clean and even weld. So with that being said, let's talk about this guy. It's a Forney Easy Weld 125C. It is a flux core welder. When you get it, it will come with a few options that you can choose to get or not get. I chose to get them. It comes with a helmet, a couple sets of gloves. These are welding gloves that are super helpful. Um, and then it comes with this unit right here. Let's talk about what uh, comes off of it here. So first of all, you got your power plug, pretty simple. This is a plus that it does go onto 110 and it doesn't require 240. So uh, I know most people won't have a 240 or 220 plug readily available to them. So this will make it really accessible to use. It does have a grounding plug. So remember how I said you have to complete that circuit to create a short for welding. So this will complete the circuit so it'll create that short that you need for welding. And then you have the gun here. It's got a couple of things. It's got the trigger here to advance the wire, and it also has a little uh, hanging rod here so you can hang it on something if you need to. I, I don't know why you use it though. 
It does have the tip here. You can remove this and replace it if you need to. You just unscrew it, and then you can pull it off, replace it as necessary, and then it just screws right back on. So this is it. It's pretty simple to use, but it uh, works really good. So all you got here for adjustments is your wire speed from a zero to a 10. Uh, I'm pretty sure that doesn't correspond to anything. It's just a graduated scale. It's got a temperature alarm here, an on or off switch, and then a thin plate and sheet metal switch for thickness of metal. I did kind of wish it had more of a selection instead of just thin plate or sheet metal, but this will work for my purposes. The other part to this is opening the sides. All you gotta do is slide this piece down and then it'll open up. Pretty simple in here. There's not a whole lot to it and not a whole lot that you will have to touch or do with it. It's just got the wire here on a spool. Pretty simple, it'll show you exactly how to hook it up. There's pictures up here. You can't screw this up, very simple. So after it's hooked up, you should never need to open this up unless you have to replace the wire. There's also a circuit reset here in case you do get an overcurrent. Something you will note here too is on the bottom, there is some thickness of steel guidelines that may or may not help you for the wire feed speed as well as the thin or sheet metal uh, settings. So that's it guys, pretty simple. This welder is really easy to use if you're a small project, do-it-yourselfer. This is perfect for exactly what you need to do. If you're doing it professionally, you're probably going to want to invest in a nice uh, MIG system or, or something to that effect just because uh, it'll work better, uh, make cleaner welds. The only disadvantage to using the flux core welder like this is it will tend to uh, spatter quite a bit. So you just have to spend more time cleaning up after you do all of your welds. So that's it guys, pretty simple. Um, if you guys wanna check out some basic techniques on how to weld or see this guy in action, you can check out the link right above here to see how to weld. Otherwise, if you wanna check out some of my other videos and most recent videos, you can check them out right here or you can hit the subscribe button right here. Thanks guys, I appreciate you watching. Please hit the subscribe if you haven't already and turn that bell icon to be notified of all of our new videos. Thanks guys, y'all have a good one.